This is the fifth video installment in Math 1 EOC release test, um, working through uh, the questions on that test. This is number 25. Mario compared the slope of the function graphed below to the slope of the linear function that has an x-intercept of 4 thirds and a y-intercept of negative 2. What is the slope of the function with the smaller slope? Okay, so uh, we're looking at two functions, and then we're going to see which one has the smaller slope, and that will be our answer, whatever the slope of the smaller slope function is. Okay, so looking at the function that's already graphed, let's find that slope. Okay, so we're looking for two points on our graph that are clear, okay, and then we're going to do rise over run. So if we start here, we rise up one, and then we run three, okay? So my slope, since it's rise over run, my slope of that function is one third, okay? Now I'm gonna be looking at a different function. They want me to compare it to a different function that has an x-intercept of four thirds, okay? And four thirds is the same as one and one third, right? So I'm gonna look at my x-axis and I'm gonna go one and one third and it's gonna intersect right there. Then it has a y-intercept of negative two. So I'm gonna go to negative two and put that there. Okay, so here's two points. So my line is gonna look something like this. Okay, I can already tell that that line in purple right there is steeper. Okay, so uh, whatever the slope is, and I don't know what it is, okay, because these two aren't really clear points to do rise over run, but this slope right here is steeper. The steeper the slope, the bigger the slope is. And my question wants to know what's the slope of the, the smaller slope? Well, I know that this is going to be a bigger slope than the other one, and this is my smaller slope. So that's going to be my answer. Number 26. The boiling point of water, T, measured in degrees at an altitude, A, measured in feet, is modeled by this function. In terms of altitude and temperature, which statement best describes the meaning of the slope? Okay. Before we even look at the options, um, let's look at the equation itself. Okay, so basically the temperature, okay, is described by this number times the altitude that it's at, the height, plus 212. So if you look at the slope, you'll notice that the slope is negative. That means that it's going to be decreasing, okay? There's only two answers that say it decreases. So you can go ahead and mark off A and B. For C and D, okay, it says the boiling point decreases by 18 degrees as the altitude increases by 1,000. For D, it says the boiling point decreases by 1.8 degrees as the altitude increases by 1,000. Now, I know that the slope right here, slope is described as change in Y divided by change in X. In this case, Y is our temperature, so change in temperature divided by X, which is the change in altitude. Okay, so I'm going to test both of these options. Option C says that the boiling point decreases by 18 degrees as the altitude increases by 1,000. So that means that the temperature would decrease by 18 over the altitude as the altitude increases by 1,000, okay? The other option, D, so this is what C is saying. The other option, D, is saying that the boiling point decreases by 1.8 as the altitude increases by 1,000. So I've put it in my calculator here to the right, okay? For C, I put in negative 18 divided by 1,000 and I got negative 0.018 which is not the slope right here, okay? And then I put in negative 1.8 over 1,000, and I did get the slope right there, okay? So the correct answer would be D. Number 24, a line segment has endpoints J and L. The point K is the midpoint of JL. 
what is the, an equation of a line perpendicular to JL and passing through K? Okay, so it says, what is the equation of a line? Well, here, in order to get the equation of a line, we need the y-intercept and we need the slope, okay? So uh, it's, it gives us a line segment, J, L, and those points. It says that point K is the midpoint, okay? Our line that we're looking for is going to be perpendicular to this line that has those points in it and it's going to go through the midpoint. So there's two things that we need to find about line segment JL. Okay, line segment JL, we need to find the slope, okay, and then so that we can get the perpendicular slope, and then we also need to find the midpoint, which is K. Okay, once we do that, we'll be able to write our new line. So for the midpoint, okay, in order to get the midpoint, between two points, all I have to do is add the x values and divide them by 2, and then add the y values and divide them by 2. So the x values here are 2 and 6, so I'm going to add those together, divide by 2. The y values are 4 and 8 add those together and divide by 2. The midpoint is in the exact middle. That's the average. Okay. 2 plus 6 is 8 divided by 4. Or sorry, divided by 2 is going to be 4. 4.8 or 4 plus 8 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so that's the midpoint. That's K. All right. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to find the slope of what JL is. Okay, because I'm trying to write an equation of a line that's perpendicular to it, and perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So if I find the slope of JL, I can take the opposite reciprocal for my new slope. So I'm going to erase what I have here. All right, now in order to find the slope, I'm going to use my slope formula. My slope formula is y2 minus y1, the change in y, divided by the change in x. Okay, y2, that's going to be 8 minus 4. And then x2 minus x1, that's 6 minus 2. Okay, so my slope is 1. Okay. All right. Now, I'm looking for the equation of a line that's perpendicular to this line. All right. Perpendicular means opposite reciprocal. Okay. So, if I look at this slope, all right, 1 is the same as 1 over 1. For my new line, okay, my new slope, I need to do the opposite reciprocal. So, since this slope is positive, my new slope is going to be negative, and then I have to switch 1 over 1. The uh, denominator and the numerator, which is also just going to be 1. So my new slope is right here, and it says that it's going to be going through this midpoint right here. Okay, so using the midpoint and my slope, I'm going to write an equation for my new line. In order to get the equation for my new line, I need the slope, which I already have right here, negative 1. I also need b. So if I plug in this right here, I can get B. Okay. Um, in my ordered pair right here, 4 goes in for X, 6 goes in for Y. So again, I'm just plugging in what I have so that I can solve for B. All right. So I have my y-intercept, I have my slope, my new equation is y equals negative x plus 10, and that would be b. Number 28, a triangle has vertices at those points. What is the approximate perimeter of the triangle? Okay, so here's my triangle. I'm going to graph it real quick. You will have graph paper on the EOC. You just have to ask for it.
Okay, so here's my triangle. All right. Now, they want to know what the perimeter is. The perimeter is the distance around the triangle. In order to find the distance, I can't just count units here because it's slanted. So I'm going to have to use my distance formula between each one. Okay? So, let me make another clear spot over here for us to work through the problems. Okay. Um, so, first I'm going to be looking for the distance right here, um, and I'm going to have this be the red side, okay? So, for the red side, I'm looking for the distance between 1, 3, and negative 1, negative 1, okay? Now, if you notice in the formula, I have an x2 and an x1, um, a y2 and a y1, so I need to label my points. This is going to be x1, y1, x2, y2. It doesn't matter which one is which as long as you're consistent. Okay, so for the distance, x2 minus x1, I'm just following my formula over there, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to type it right into my calculator. So second square root negative 1 minus 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 3 squared. Okay, and I get 4.47. Okay, so this side is 4.47. Okay, um, I'm going to color this side the green side and I'm going to find the distance between 1, 3, and 2, negative 3. Again, just following my formula. It's important that you label your points because otherwise you might get confused when you go to plug them in. Okay, put that straight into your calculator. Okay, so the distance there is 6.08. All right, and now we have to find the distance for that last side. And I'm going to call that the orange side. All right, so again, labeling my points. Okay. It's also really important, by the way, when you're plugging in that you make sure to enter negative signs as negatives and subtraction signs as subtraction. Okay, you can't use both the negative and the subtraction for the same thing. So here, if you'll notice, I'm doing negative 3 minus negative 1. All right, and then I'm going to get 3.61 for that side. Now, the question um, uh, is asking what's the perimeter, okay? So in order to get the perimeter, I'm going to need to add up the distance for each side, okay? So I'm going to add 4.47 plus 6.08 plus 3.61, okay? So I'm adding up all three sides, and the perimeter that I get is 14.16 and it asks for the approximate perimeter so my answer would be B. Alright, 29. The table below shows the area of several states. Delaware has an area of 2,000 square miles which is true if Delaware is included in the data set. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, enter in the first data set originally without Delaware, and I'm going to find the mean, the range, 
the inner quartile range, and the standard deviation. Then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add Delaware to my data set. And then I'm going to find the mean range, inner quartile range, and standard deviation again. And then I'll compare the two. One thing to note is that in the area, it says that it's in thousands of square miles. So this for Connecticut, for example, says six. That means 6,000, 59,000, 12,000, so on and so forth. So when we add Delaware, we're not going to write Delaware 2,000. We're just going to put a two because it's already in thousands. All right, so in our calculator, you're going to go into stat, edit, and you're going to enter in the table that you're given without Delaware, because remember we're comparing it before we add Delaware and then after we put Delaware in there. Okay, now in order to get all that information over there, the mean range, interquartile range, standard deviation, you're going to press stat, scroll right to calc, and you're going to select enter for one variable stats. Then press enter. All right, so the first one is the mean. The mean looks like this, okay? So the mean that we're given is right here, 31.38. I just go to the hundredths place. The range is the maximum minus the minimum. Okay, the maximum minus the minimum. If I scroll down over here, it gives me the maximum of 59 and the minimum of 6. So I'm going to do 59 minus 6 to get 53. Okay, the IQR, the IQR, the inner quartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So if I look at Q3, it's 54, Q1 is 10, so I'm going to do 54 minus 10 and get 44. And then the standard deviation. The standard deviation is right here, SX, so that's 23.71. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into my table, and I'm going to add Delaware with its 2,000 square miles. So I'm going to go to the end of my list. I'm going to add in a 2 for Delaware. And then I'm going to recalculate my statistics. All right, so with Delaware in there, you'll notice the mean decreases to 28.11. Okay, the range, if you look at the range, that's the, again, that's the maximum minus the minimum. So the maximum is 59 minus the minimum, which is 2. So that's going to be 57. The inner quartile range, again, is Q3 minus Q1. So Q3, 54, minus 7.5. That's going to give us 46.5. And then scroll up to look at the standard deviation, and that's 24.25. All right, now that we have all of our data, let's look at our answers and see which one makes sense. A says that the mean increases. Okay, that's not true. If you notice, it actually decreases. The next one says the range decreases. That's also not true because the range increases. Next one says the inner quartile range decreases. That's not true because it increases. The last says the standard deviation increases, which is true. So the correct answer would be D. All right, we're actually going to go ahead and stop there. We'll pick up with number 30 on the next video.